Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you about background jobs and how to use them in Rails. So background jobs are a way that you can take some code in your application and have it be executed in the background. So on a different process than the main application. So what this means is like, let's say if you have to go submit a form on your website and then after you submit it, it needs to do some sort of task. And that task might take a while, like it might be processing data, it might be uh, like hitting up APIs, it's checking to see like pulling in data from different APIs. So we wouldn't want to do that in the regular request cycle. So when a user is pressing submit, we don't want to have them just wait until the form is submitted. Because that's the usual process in Rails, because Rails is synchronous. It means every code, every line of code you run has to be run in order. And then basically like the request cycle won't end until it executes all the code. So this is where background processors come in because with a background processor, you could take your code and you could tell it it should be executed asynchronous on a different like CPU processor. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool. And then these libraries already take care of queuing and everything. So it can make sure that, you know, it can't do multiple jobs at once unless it has the bandwidth for it. So there's a few options that you can choose from when you're choosing a background processor, but I'll quickly talk about it. So in Rails, there's already a, a framework called Active Job. Now, Active Job is really cool. It's a framework for declaring jobs and making them run on a variety of different queuing backends. So there's already a job framework that kind of will integrate with all of the different background processors so you need to choose the background processors and the most common for rails is there's a few gems so there is a gem called delayed job we see it's actually a database based background jobber so it'll store all of its stuff in the database so we could really just use delayed job and then we wouldn't have to worry about you know any other additional dependencies but if we want to use sidekick sidekick's another gem which actually runs its whole own server it uses threads to handle many jobs in the same process it doesn't require rails but it integrates tightly with rails and then you also can even have your own dashboard to view the different uh, jobs that you're scheduling so it's pretty cool i'm going to show you how to use sidekick in this tutorial and then delay job is just an alternative where you don't need to run a separate server. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to get started by going into the console. All right, and then I'm going to just create a new app and let's just call it background test. I'll use Postgres as the database and Tailwind as the framework because that's what I always do, but that's optional. And then I'm going to press enter to run the setup for our new Rails app. All right, now that this is finished, you can CD into the app and I'll start the server with bin slash dev just to test that it's working. So we can go to localhost 3000. Now there's this little screen where we have to create the database. And then boom, look, we're right on the Rails screen. So that means Rails is set up, our app is working, and we're ready to start developing. So what I'm gonna do is quickly, I'm just gonna stop the server, and then I'm going to generate a new model by doing a scaffold. I'm gonna do Rails G scaffold, post, let's give it a title. A body of type text so usually I do rich text but I'm just gonna do regular text this time let's just leave it at that and then we'll do Rails me migrate I'll start the server we still don't see anything because we need to change the route real quick so I'm gonna open up Visual Studio and then we're gonna open up that code go into the config routes.rb and I'm just gonna remove the comment here so our root is set to the post index, which is perfect for the model that I just created. And then if we reload, 
we'll see that we have the post. And if I want to go create a new post, oops, this post, and we're creating posts. So look, we created a post, and you saw it just, it was created in like two seconds. Okay, but imagine if there was a process we had to do. So I'm going to quickly simulate the process by going into code. Let's go in the app controllers and the post controller. And then we'll go into create action. And let's say after post.save, let's say like there was some, so I'm going to add a comment. This is like long running code. This could be doing anything with the post. Like let's say integrating with APIs, maybe posting this post. You might want to post this to Twitter, post it to Facebook, post it to LinkedIn. But that would take a few seconds. That would really like take a while. But let's say like sleep five. You might expect like five seconds. Which this is going to change up the whole experience a lot. Let's say I'm going to create a new post. Okay, it's my first post. And I create post. And it's just waiting. You see the loader just going. And five seconds is actually short. Like, see, that didn't feel like that long. But I've been in some apps where... <laughs> Man, it's like a whole 50 seconds or something. And you go to create the post. Oh, whoops. Yeah, look, it's creating. And I couldn't even cancel because it's just... Oh, it's going to take forever. 50 seconds is so long. And this is the experience it's like when you have blocking code in your Rails app. But here's where backer jobs come in. Right? So I'm just going to cancel out of this. And we need to move this long running code into a background job. That can be executed simultaneously. So we could just start off by creating the new job if we go in the console. And by the way, we haven't set up a processor, a background processor yet. I just want to show you uh, how to do this real quick. So we're at the job, let's call it um, like post slow code. I don't know. <laughs> That's just the name of the job. So if we go and find that, we can find that by going to app jobs and you'll see that we have our new job called the post slow code job. And then instead of args, we would be expecting a post ID. And then we can set the post, post.find, post ID. All right, and now we have the post and we could literally do our slow code in here. See, so I could take all of this code, move it in here. And maybe it doesn't need five. Let's just put like finished running code. And so we can test it out. Also be cool to get an emoji so it can stand out. I don't have an emoji keyboard. So I have to always look it up on Windows. <laughs> uh, finished running code. And then this will be able, we'll be able to test if it actually is running. And then right here, we can call the job. We can post slow code job perform later and then we'll pass in the post.id all right <clears throat> now let's start the server again and we'll see if anything changes so i'm gonna press new post let's see. hey this is my post right i'm gonna create it and then look nothing happens but also i don't think that it's performing oh wait it is actually processing by post controller and it actually finished running the code. Interesting. So I think, does active job not need anything? Can you use it by itself? <laughs> I'm so confused because it worked. It's kind of silly. Oh, it has active job has built in adapters for multiple queuing backends. Oh. We can set the queue adapter in, in what the application.rb or you can do it on per job basis. Interesting. Application.rb. We don't even have anything in here. So I'm just confused. What processor is it running on? See, it says there's all these lists of processors, sidekick, resk, delay job. I'm just confused how it even ran without any. Good job. 
have a default queue or like a default oh using the default active job queue adapter blocks everything <laughs> so yeah like you do have you have one background job <laughs> so look let's say if we the difference here is if we do multiple let's just say we like actually did like five of these at once i don't think it's going to know how to handle this all right so let's go back and create the new post let's test this default queue no 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 <laughs> create post oh and now look at this look at how slow it's going so yeah it's definitely not working because it had to run like a few of them before it could even get to the next one. You see? And then it's, I think, it didn't even queue it either. Because I don't see the rest of them getting triggered. Or maybe, I guess we did only three. So I think it did it all, but it definitely was blocking. Actually, no, look. We definitely did five. So some of them didn't even get executed. Alright, so that's why, don't use default active job queue. That's terrible. Right? That's why we're going to set up sidekick. So I think for Sidekick, it's pretty easy. You just have to make sure that you have Redis, which you already we already need Redis for, for Rails. So that should be pretty easy. And then we have to add the Sidekick gem. So we can either do this for the console or we can just go in the gem file. Here, I'll add it right next to Redis. Add Sidekick gem. And I'm gonna bundle. Fetching Sidekick. Start bin dev. Uh, all right, and then basically we need to start sidekick too. That's the thing because right now we don't have sidekick So to start the sidekick server we could either do it in the console I think saying We can just bin slash sidekick. I know. No, it's not. How do I start sidekick? It's saying there's an issue. Oh, I think Redis might not be set up because I'm on. Yeah, look, it's it can connect to Redis. So sidekick re relies on Redis. So for me to restart Redis, I need to just go pull up this startup commands. Pseudo service, su Redis server, restart. This is just for Redis, but I have to run it on my WSL system because uh, just every time you reboot the shell, I don't really have like an, an init script. I've had it before, but I don't have it on this one. All right, so now we do have Redis. We still don't have Sidekick, but we could start it. We could start it by doing this. Sidekick, see it starts the server, and now our processing will work. But I'm not going to run it in a different uh, shell. This doesn't make sense. And we already have a setup uh, for running multiple servers. Because with, with Tailwind, we're now using bin slash dev to run a few servers at once. And it's using foreman. So to go and check this out, we can go over to the proc file. Which right now we just have proc file dev. So we can check this out. We have a web for the rail server. We have CSS for the Tailwind server. And then to add... Our sidekick server we're gonna add a worker we're gonna say sidekick and this is just gonna like run the sidekick command and then also we can have it use our our sidekick config I think we do get a do we not no we don't get a sidekick config file but we can create one All right, let's not worry about that. But I think if we did config, it's something like dash C. Make that site create YML. And then we just create a new file called sidekick.yml. Now I don't remember, I literally don't remember what to put in it. So let me quickly look at my other app. They don't want me to find it. Wait, I could probably do open recent. Wait, 
it's just the same one. Or I do have two windows. <clears throat> Yeah, look, we do have sidekick that wide mount. So basically, it's just defining a few different cues. That's pretty simple. Jeez, not to go back here. All right, but this isn't really this isn't in, this isn't required. To define these cues, because we can always uh, do it without that. All right, now we have our sidekick server starting. Now when we do bin dev, it'll actually start our rail server, start the tailwind server and the sidekick server all at once. Let's just see, although I don't see it starting. Oh wait, no, right here, sidekick. Already we're getting some, some things. Although I don't know why it's trying to, it's trying to perform the background jobs from another app in my app. Interesting. Sidekick YMO. See, I don't know why that's happening. Okay, and then we also have to add the queue adapter. Remember, we were looking at that before. We have to go and config application.rb. We have to add this config active job queue adapter. start bin dev and actually in that proc file forgot we're supposed to actually do bundle exec sidekick because this will change based on where you are so bundle exec is just like a good way to make sure that it works all right and then we should be good to go Now I just want to test if it's actually working with our sidekicks. Hey. I think I might have deleted the code actually. Hey, look, I don't even think we're doing a background job, but it should be working just fine. So let's go back in the controller real quick. Let's see app controllers. Post controller. I don't think I can I don't think I could control Z, but dang, what did we call the job now? I'm confused. Post slow code job. See, that's kind of hard to remember. Later. Post ID. So now we're going to see, does this slow code job still do the same kind of thing? Or is it better now? Okay, post. So what happened? We saw... It was in queued and then it just finished, it executed just like that. So see sidekick is already making it better. And then if we want to like literally put as many as we want, it'll just in queue it and it'll run them one after the other. I think it depends on how many how many CPUs CPU is allowed or how many how many cores sidekick is allowed to use. Let's see if we create post. Let me look at the console. It, let's see it. <laughs> it queued in like five different jobs and then one by one, it's executing it. So one, two, three, four, five. I think it's actually still running some from earlier too. Cause we're just queuing so many. And yeah, that's how that's how you do it. That's how you use a background processor. If you want to use delay job, that just means you don't have to use sidekick at all. So you wouldn't even need this whole server. It would just use your at least I'm pretty sure it would already just use your database. So like the Postgres that I'm using. Or whatever database you have set up. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And you've learned something about background jobs, how to set them up in your app, and then also the different processors that you need to install. So there's the big ones are sidekick and delay job. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this and you learned something new. And stay tuned for new videos on this channel.